If you are feeling a little overwhelmed or discouraged because maybe you have a bunch of beginning of the year data back on your students, and you basically have a report telling you all of the things your students don't know, or maybe it's telling you your students are two grade levels behind. Whatever the situation is, if you are feeling overwhelmed and defeated by that, this video is for you. So one of the things that I like to do whenever I am leaving a school after working with a group of teachers or students is I like to sit in my car and send myself a voice message, just kind of reflecting on the day. If I'm being honest, it kind of ends up being like my sticky notes on my desk. I literally have like a million sticky notes all over the place and some of them get referred to and others don't. My voice messages are the same, but I actually was scrolling back looking for something the other day and I came across this voice message reflection that I had and it was from working with a teacher and her students on division. Now, when I met with this teacher, she was feeling really discouraged because she felt like her students didn't understand division. And I was working with her students. And after a while, I realized that a lot of them were making the same mistake. So this group of students didn't have their multiplication facts down. And so they were writing out their multiples to help them divide. And the way that they were doing it was they were writing out, like, let's say they were writing out their three facts. They were writing three comma six comma nine comma 12 comma and so forth. And so what was happening with a lot of these students is as they were writing out their multiples, they might mess up on like the third multiple. And then all of the other multiples after that were incorrect, which meant that the numbers they were using when they were dividing were wrong. So I had this observation and I was talking to the teacher about it. And when we had this conversation, she felt so relieved because it was not that her students didn't understand division. It was that they had a common error that they were making. Before we had this conversation, she was feeling like, oh my goodness, my students don't understand division. Now I have to start all over. I've got to start at square one. And that actually wasn't the case. Students did understand division. They were just making a mistake in the process that was not allowing them to demonstrate their understanding of division. And so I think that a lot of times when we get this beginning of the year data, or really just data at any point, we may look at it as like students can or they can't, right? They either can divide or they can't divide without really digging in and figuring out, okay, where are they on the progression of mastering that concept? They may not be here at square one, and they may not be here at the finish line, but they may be right here. And if we can figure out where they're at in their understanding, then we can build on that and move their understanding forward rather than starting all the way at the beginning. I shared a quote from John Tapper, and it says, even if students thinking is convoluted, complicated, or just wrong, there is almost always an underlying logic to it. For some reason, that quote came up for me when I was thinking about this situation. Like, yes, students were making mistakes, but it was based off of some accurate thinking, right? They knew that in the division process, they were going to need their multiples. Great. They were just executing it incorrectly. And so my takeaway for you in this is as you're going into this school year, you may have a lot of data that tells you what your students can't do. But my encouragement to you is to figure out what your students can do. Because when we know what students can do, we can build off that. We can move their thinking forward. When we are sitting in that place of my students can't do this, it actually feels overwhelming. We feel like we have to start all over. And that becomes a lot more overwhelming than recognizing that there is a part of this that students understand. Every student understands something about math. And so if we can figure out what they do understand, then we can help fill in the gap. Oftentimes, that gap is not as big as it feels like on paper when we're looking at it as a very like binary they can or they can't do this rather than how much of this can they do? How much do they understand? Where are students falling off in this process? So I hope that this is encouraging to you. I hope it gives you um, a place to start when you're looking at a lot of this data and know that what students understand about math is not always very obvious. It takes a lot of curiosity and asking questions and really listening to students thinking to figure out where they're at, but it is possible and it actually saves us a lot of time in the long run if we can identify what students know and how much they know rather than starting all over with a math concept.
If you haven't already, definitely check out my data tracker video. In that video, I talk about how I keep track of students' understanding in the moment so that I can build on that later on. So check out that video if you want to learn more about that and get the free data trackers that go along with that video.